We want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It's October 23, 2023, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. This is the journey, which is our weekly discipleship time. Uh, this is a we we sort of changed plans a little bit, as we have been doing a lot the last couple of weeks. Uh, for this particular hour, Susan and I were impressed to share with everybody what we believe that the Holy Spirit is sharing with us, both about the season that we have just launched into and how we go forward. And Susan, if you want to have some opening remarks, then we're going to have a, a I believe you, you have a worship song for us, correct? Yeah, um, basically, uh, you all know that we were in Israel a couple of weeks ago when the war broke out and Tim Wilson was also there. Is on tonight, but um, uh, coming back, we have a, a, a deep sense in our spirit that we cannot keep silent. Um, we'd be disobedient to the Lord, so we want to dedicate this night to fostering what we uh, feel the Lord is saying through this experience to help us go through the gates and not be silent. So uh, I wanted to play a worship song by Karen Davis. She wrote this, actually, and it's uh, very appropriate for the uh, time that we're in and for tonight, so or this morning, whatever time of day it is for you. So it's called um, Lead Me to the Rock. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Actually, Tim, do you want to um, do you want to just open us up in prayer, and then we'll we'll get right into it. Yes, Father, we come again with hearts that are so full of joy because of your goodness, and even in the midst of grief and sorrow, your goodness is immovable. In the midst of war and uncertainty, your goodness is firm and sure. And so we say we're thankful, Lord. We're thankful for one another. We're thankful for this opportunity to come and to meet and to pray and to be built up in you so that we can do the work of the kingdom. We can join you, Jesus, our chief intercessor, the chief watchman on the wall in crying out for the things that are on your heart. And so we come today and we say thank you, and we say lead us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Tim. All right. So, um, Susan, do you want to do you want to give your comments? Do you want me to? Um, I, sure. I'll. Yeah, because I think you've got something that will follow what I have to say. So, yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'll, I'll follow what you have to say. Let me just give a let me just give a scripture <clears throat> right now because we're I think we've just we've launched in the last two weeks into a new season and we have to recognize this and we've gone from a season of relative peace to a season of war <clears throat> and that we're just learning as we go what that actually means. Excuse me. But let me just let me just recite Psalm uh, 144 verses 1 and 2. Praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. So we just say thank you Lord for your word that is true, you're not a man that you would lie, that your word as it goes forth will not return void, but will accomplish what you desire and will prosper in the thing for which you sent it. Thank you that in fact you are, as watchmen, you are training our hands for war and our fingers for battle. We don't even fully understand what that means, but Lord, we are, we are looking to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, to help us daily uh, on our walk with you. And we thank you that you're the one who does lead us and instruct us in the way that we should go. In uh, in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name, amen. Go ahead, Sue. Well, um, 
Thank you everyone for hopping on board for this uh, discipleship hour. And like I said previously, coming back from Israel this last week, um, the Lord has really convicted our hearts that we cannot be silent and that we must use what we have witnessed and seen, however small it is, to blow the trumpet that the times have shifted I think we're in a new a new season, if not a new era. It very, it very was very obvious to us that when we were in Israel, it was a divine uh, moment. Uh, we landed just hours before the war broke out and um, realized that God had sent us there on his time to see what he was going to show us to see. And it's been evolving ever since what is this it, it to us walking through it was almost surreal we just we thought we were there for one reason and all of a sudden we were tossed in this whirlwind i don't know if tim's nodding his head i think they felt the same way or similar similarly but coming out of it is we cannot be silent and tonight we want to go over some thoughts that we've been pondering and uh, I we do believe we are in a new season, if not a new era, and how do we articulate that so that it's something we can grab hold of. And um, if for me, you know, 9-11, 2001, uh, the Lord gave me a warning, a vision about that. And um, it was heartbreaking for me to see something so devastating and so obviously a, a, a clash of spiritual dynamics um, to see the world fall asleep again within a couple of months. And Barna also uh, articulated that in a follow-up um, research article on November of 2001, basically stating that the church went back to sleep. <clears throat> We can't this time. This time is different. The attack was on Israel, so I think that there's uh, more attention. Uh, there should be more attention because Israel is involved. And um, that now is the time for us to really look at ourselves where God is pulling the church together, is pulling the Messianic community together in Israel in wonderful ways. In the nations, we are we are on this line tonight because we're concerned. We've been doing daily briefs. I didn't, you know, uh, one month ago, daily briefs wouldn't work. Now they do. <laughs> because why? God is getting our attention. So the nine, this is a, a wake-up call. I believe we are, we are going through a major gate. And the call is to go through, go through the gates. You know, uh, a month ago, six weeks ago, we went through um, a, a month of praying Isaiah 62 across the nations. Isaiah 62, 10, go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, take out the stones, lift up a banner for the peoples. And I believe that that is very much our commission now. It was not just a good 21 days of prayer on Isaiah 62, thrilled that so many, you know, millions of people, I don't get into the millions deal, but many, many people climbed on board, but now God is asking us to walk it out. And so how do we walk it out as a community of watchmen? And, you know, whenever God decides to change the course of a nation, he will raise up watchmen. Second Kings 11 is probably one of the most uh, riveting chapters in the Old Testament to me, where the line of David was just about to be, uh, you know, wiped off the face of the earth. But God raised up the priests who hid uh, baby uh, Joash in the, in, in the temple for six years. And when it, the time came, they overthrew the wicked reign of what started with Ahab and Jezebel and ended with Athaliah, their daughter, where nearly the whole line of David was killed off. 
but the watch, they set up the watch and at the right time, they presented the true king of Israel. And I believe that's a preparation that the, the global watch is definitely focused on and building up the watches in the nations. Because why? We're preparing for a day when the Lord will return and the watchman will hail his return, will be part of the hailing chorus of his return. So um, all that being said, and uh, Fred, you can go into what you want to say, we will not fail. If it's just Fred and I up there screaming and yelling, we're going to do it. <laughs> Till the right. day I die, I'm, I'm not going to let this thing fall. That God is calling forth the watch. What is it we can do now? What can each one of us do? What steps is this gateway opening for each one of us? What steps must we, uh, what must we leave behind so that we can go forward? And that's what the discussion is tonight, is how do we go through the gates? How do we pick up our, our shields and our swords to go forward? Well, Israel has adopted uh, Operation Swords of Iron. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> But we as watchmen are going to, last week I had a very strong vision. I sent out an email on it. You can read more about it. But a, a vision of a shield in the mists of the heaven appearing with the number 777 appearing before it. And it looked like an angel's wing holding it up. And uh, I believe it was a beckoning call for the um, shields of iron. <laughs> to come forward at this time. And the watchmen are watchmen who are defenders of God's covenant. And so there's a call for the, the defense of God's covenant in this time of turmoil. I don't know what it's gonna look like as times go on, but I do know the infrastructure of what it means to hold that shield up in faith. And I think we all have different interpretations of that. No one has this single handle on this. But I do believe God is all calling us into a unique, unique stance of taking steps forward in faith and holding up that shield for his kingdom purpose as he, as these times unfold. And we are in an accelerated time. And I look back in 2021, really, really the Global Watch got uh, boots on the ground going. And that's not that many years ago, a couple of years ago. And how the end time narrative has unfolded. Can we hasten the day of the Lord? I would have to say I have the faith to say yes. <laughs> he's waiting for us. We've been waiting for him in the past season. Now he's waiting for us to step forward. So Fred. Amen. And I <clears throat> just to kind of tag team onto what you were saying. Um, we're really one of the things that we're so thankful for is we're so thankful for each one of you and the fact that Susan and I are are not uh, not screaming on the wall alone that we are with you. And so we I just want to say again, I think you all know this, but we it's it's worth repeating because everyone who's on this call and the watchmen, some of whom are not on the call tonight but are definitely a major part of the global watch um we want you all to understand how thankful we are for each one of you and that that god has spent the last two years building up a community across the across the globe and i believe it's really for such a time as this um, we didn't know what it was for or where we were going but um but it's very clear now that that he's put us in a position where we're prepared to do some things that that I think that he really wants us to steward. So we're 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 doing this, uh, <clears throat> and we're going into this season with an understanding that we're not the experts. Susan and I are not, but we are on the journey with all of you. Um, the I think the analogy that Jenny Hager gave is such a good one that, and it applies to where we are right now. But the Global Watch is not a ministry that you join, but it's a river that you jump into. And we want to just say that Susan and I are in the river with all of you. It's a very humbling place to be because we are certainly over our heads in the river. 
but um, the Lord is teaching us how to swim and how to flow with the river of his spirit and with each other. Now, our job, Susan's and my job as leaders is to really to steward what he's given us and provide some sense of banks on the sides of the river to keep us flowing in the direction that the Holy Spirit's wanting to take us. And um, Fred, Fred, just a, just a caveat to that. We've not been this way before. Right. None of us have. Right. Right. And so, um, you know, we getting back to the river analogy, we can't see very far down the river. We don't know all the twists and turns that it's going to take. Um, and we are absolutely dependent on the Holy Spirit's guidance every day. And we're also dependent on you all who are on the Global Watch, hearing from the Lord, giving your input. And then at the end of the day, all of us being in agreement as we go down the river together. So that's um, that's just so important. And you have to know that you are not just observers, you are vital participants. And we we are listening, not only for the voice of the Holy Spirit, but we're listening to, to the Holy Spirit's voice coming from you all as you seek the Lord. I just want to give, I, I want, we're going to go into, um, into breakout rooms to uh, talk about some, some things. We don't have much time, but we're going to, we're going to try to at least get everybody's participation in this. But I want to give a, a what is maybe a somewhat unexpected exhortation, but as we, I've been praying today about this, I have this sense, and you can, you know, you can do with it what you, you can just process this as you as you deem fit. But I think that as a body, in the global watch, but I think this I'm seeing this in the church as well, and particularly in the, in the Watchman community. <clears throat> We're spending a lot of time in the Old Testament. We're digging in and we're trying to discern how to apply the lessons that that uh, that the Old Testament teaches us, and it's it's fascinating and it's wonderful. Um, but I want to exhort everyone <clears throat> to start spending more time in the New Testament and meditating on what is being said and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us through the New Covenant. Because the, the New Testament is about a new covenant, and we have to understand that that's what we're operating in, not in the Old Testament. <clears throat> we all know that, but I think we need to really, really dig into God's word in, in, in the New Testament. In particular, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to look at, over the next week or two, um, reading through and meditating on the book of John, particularly chapters 13 through 17. There are four chapters that won't take you long to read through, but when you start to meditate on what Jesus is saying in those chapters, it's going to help, I think, guide us and direct us for how we're to move forward, not just individually, but corporately as well. And um, there are four things that, I mean, there's many, much more than that, actually. These, these chapters are really packed full of, of meaning and significance. But uh, Jesus is talking about the importance of Number one, abiding in him. Number two, obeying his commands. Number three, the new command that he's giving, a new command, he says, of loving one another uh, in the same way that he loves us. And number four, the desire that we as the body, as his body, be one with him and one with each other. And those things are really important. Uh, as we go as we go forward because we have to be abiding in him and and in his love and uh, and he talks about that there's we could spend probably a whole year just going through what the, those four chapters and what that all means um you know this this isn't a command from us to do it but I think that it's gonna it's gonna help inform our hearts and our minds in terms of where we're to where we're to go in the days ahead so um, I don't want to spend any more time on that right now, but I, I think that what we need to do, what I would like to do is this. In our breakout sessions, God has been speaking to each of us about, uh, you know, about things, about what's actually going on and what we're discerning in the spirit. 
and we need to have a few minutes to just try to share one or two things that God has really impressed upon us in this season. And then we're going to have the, as we, as we have in the past, we're going to have, um, you know, a spokesperson from each group, just give highlights of that. But it's really important that we hear from you, each one of you, what God is speaking. And, um, and we'll see what, we'll see, you know, where that goes, where that leads us. Well, I, I think too, to be specific, how are you going to pick up your shield of shield of faith? Um, as we go into this war season. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I just want to give a caveat to this because it is remarkable. Both Friday and Saturday um, after the uh, briefings that we did, there were remarkable answers from Israel. Friday, um, the host, uh, the journalist was focusing on the release of the captives and protection of the cap, um, uh, the uh, hostages. Right after that, we found out that two of the hostages were being released. Saturday, we were um, connecting with Hezbollah, uh, with Lebanon, and um, praying for the northern borders. Right after that call, or during the call, the uh, alert and the alarm over northern Israel was canceled. We need to give thank thanks for that. Your faith, our prayers are making a difference. Yes. Um, and so the the thing that got wiped off our, our, our the shelves of our heart was just, we can get very complacent just jumping on these calls. Uh, and I don't want to, don't take this as a criticism, but how can we spread the word? How can we build? How many, you know, reaching out to our friends, you know, this is going on. You have a heart for prayer and intercession. Join in and let's let's build this wall across the nations. What can you do as national leaders? Some of you are national leaders. What can you do to build up the wall in your nation? What is God showing you? Um, seeking the Lord a little more in, in, um, intently or purposefully for the things that concern you, the things that you're watching over in your own uh, sphere of influence. So there's a steps forward that God has prepared for every one of us. I am convinced of it. Every one of us has a door open at this point, and God is inviting us to step forward in faith. Yeah. So um, I don't know what that is for each one of us, but maybe you can all be sharing that in this conversation and praying for each other for clarity on going forward. So yeah, yeah. So again, we're 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 looking at we want to hear from each other just briefly one or two kind of bullet point things of what the Lord has been has is speaking to us about the season that we're in, what he's been speaking to us specifically in the last two weeks since the since the, the war started in Israel. So Susan, take us into the um into okay. the breakout rooms. We're gonna we're gonna be 15 minutes, so it's 28 after the hour. So it at uh at quarter at two our time eight eight forty three um okay. let's 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 try to be sure it's not longer than fifteen minutes so that we have time to hear from the group leaders okay sounds good okay. here we go cyberspace travel the safe landings <laughs> welcome back everyone. <laughs> Well, I don't know about all, all the rest of you, but we had a really powerful time in our breakout session. Can't wait to hear from everybody. Susan Rao, how many uh, breakout rooms do we have? 11. 11, okay. Well, we got to get on it, but I, I think it's really important that we hear from people. Yes. God speaking to everyone. He's speaking to everyone. Susan, we were number 12, it said on the thing. I have. You are absolutely right. There you are, room 12. <laughs> All right. Well, you've got the governmental anointing, so I'm glad you spoke up. And uh, that's good. So we've got 12. All right. So we're going to start with um, with room one. Room one, please. Spokesperson, jump in. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Fred and Sue. Um, I offered to be the spokesperson. And wonderful. Um, I think the main thing that's been God's been saying is that um, that 
this is a time of revival for nation, but specifically uh, God is reviving with his fire. And this is a time to focus. God is calling for focused prayer and particularly focusing for Israel. And uh, coming deeper into that, uh, Shirley Sh Mombuk, she shared a very powerful scripture from Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So whenever you turn to the right hand or turn to the left. So that kind of uh, guidance by the Holy Spirit is something God is speaking into. And for me, uh, I, I've been having the prophetic is always very personal to me because it works out in my family. And I, and I had a vision yesterday at the church, the new church in Launceston. I was in God. I saw Jesus with a key and very ornate key opening hearts. So God is opening hearts at this point. But it's Israel, my family, me, church, everywhere. He's dealing with hearts. Ezekiel 36, giving us a new heart, giving Israel a new heart a heart of flesh, giving in my own family, myself, everyone, God dealing with hearts and changing our hearts, setting a captive free. Thank you. Wow. That's good. Great, great stuff. I'm just going to put that in the chat, the Isaiah. I got it. It's there, dear. Isaiah 30. 21. Right. Okay, awesome. That's so good. Thank you so much, Molly. All right, let's go to room two. Room two, spokesperson. We were very naughty and we didn't appoint one. All right. Well, so you can repent now and 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 be the man, Timothy. Stand up and I take your punishment. Someone else wants to jump in. Um, so there was a bit of convergence. Well, I Ruth started out telling us about um, a march for life through her village, and of course, this is one of the constant comparisons of Israel being for life and Hamas being for death. Um, but the convergence we had, um, oh, and just with Susan saying, you know, we need to start acting. So Angelica actually gave us an example of her speaking up, doing exactly what we're being asked to do. So that was encouraging. But um, Marsha and Rosalind together really um, had verses and things that talked about listening to the Lord for the tactical um, approach for the strategies that he wants and so I think that was the the main thing coming out of our group was this convergence of of both of them having different verses from scripture and and different thoughts from the Lord but really about um, praying with the Lord's strategy the Lord's direction um, and you know standing on the promises that he gives as we ask him for that direction that's it i think that's that's great and he does say you know call to me um jeremiah 33 3 call to me and i will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you will not that you do not know and so i think that's a that's great that's great stuff right there thank you so much all right let us go to room three spokesperson can you unmute and give us one or two key points Okay, Susan, who is in room three? We thought we thought Claire was going to, but I'll I'll do it. Um, okay, go ahead, Lynn. Uh, um, just to sort of summarise, there was a lot of thought of just being still and listening, um, getting close to God, hearing from Him, learning to hear more from the Holy Spirit, um, being aware of what's happening. Um, reading through Psalms forty to forty nine, there's a lot in there. Um, scriptures, Ephesians 6, the armour of God, having the armour on. Um, what do we have? Um, Lynn, may yeah. I just jump in? Yes, um, please jump in, Claire. Just the, um, um, the thing that was said was earthly aware, heavenly focused. That's good. That's what I was going to say too. Yep, yep, yep. And, and the Lord and has shown me that. His majesty. Yes. Focus on God's majesty in the midst of all the, you know, horrific horrors of war. Yeah. That is a great statement, earthly aware, heavenly focus. 
I think that's that's something that we need to keep in our minds as we every day as we go through uh, what's what's happening. We need to be aware of what's happening on the ground, but we need to be constantly focused on on heaven. Uh, I I think that's and his word, God's word, all of that. That's just so vitally important. Thank you so much. All right, I just want to add the caveat to that <laughs> is that we've had a season where we've been seeking the Lord and waiting on him. But now the Lord is waiting for us. Yeah, he's waiting on us to do our part. Right, exactly. Amen. All right, let's go to room four. Room four spokesperson. Okay, that's me. Um, right. Well, um, we had uh, agreement uh, or convergence on a couple of points. And just right in line with what you're seeing there um, is that it's uh, time for the bride to arise and that out of our mouth have to come the, uh, like rivers of flowing water to come out of our bellies of words of life, words of redemption and preparation for the bride, like to our, us to take our, our true place, um, for our lamps to be filled with oil. So um, I guess it's like to do with abiding and um, just in, in him living and moving and having our being. Um, now, to arise, it requires sacrifice, or I would also say um, surrender to his ways because fire falls on sacrifice. Um, there was also, um, I think William was talking about jumping in the river. He had a vision of a river flowing through his house that came from the east, and um, there was convergence on, on an, that same point, I think, from Hillary. Um yeah, and um, we're talking about uh, unity in the body of Christ and to all accord and one speaking out his word. Um, okay, and shields, our shields are, our faith is uh, worship, to raise up our shields in worship. Amen. I, that's great, Sue. Um, just want to just want to highlight the whole thing of preparing for the bride to arise. That um, Jesus is coming for a pure and spotless bride, and so this is this is the, this is a long term end time call that we're to be participate in absolutely, and that this requires both sacrifice and surrender. That was so well said. These are all great points, you guys, that, are, that you're coming up with. So good. All right, let's go to room five, room five, the spokesperson. I think that might be me. Were we room five? I think so. Yes, Susan. Um, okay, good, thank you. Um, now we had, um, yeah, I was, I'll just go through person by person. Um, um, Lily, first of all, she said she definitely felt a shift. Um, and one of the things that she talked about was the need she felt to support the local Jewish community to actually get alongside of them and for the church to be involved with the local Jewish community and also the importance of prayer. Um, Margaret also um, tacked on to that, that she also felt the need to contact her local rabbi when all of this was going on and also her local community um, just aware of the needs of her local community with regard to anti-Semitism and replacement theology. Um, Margaret shared the verse from 2 Kings 6, verses 16 to 18, um, which is, I think that's the one about um, more with us than with them. Yes, um, so that was a, a really good verse in view of what we were talking about. Um, and um, she just also feels that shared the sense that she felt the Lord was waiting for something at the moment. Um, then we went on to, um, then I think it was Dahlia who talked, um, and Dahlia was just feeling very encouraged um, by the authority and power of Jesus and um, that we are walking in his authority and his name. And her verse that she shared, or two verses, one was Revelation 12, 11, where we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and um, Psalm 23, and um, she felt that was 
very applicable to Israel at the moment um, with the good shepherd giving his life for his sheep. Um, so that was very special. Um, then we got to um, Sharon. Um, her, her focus was really praying for the lost sheep of Israel at the moment, um, realising that there are a lot of people that do not yet know the Lord. And um, she felt that Isaiah 43, um, especially verses 1 and 2, where the Lord talks about Israel, um, I think it talks about him Israel being his possession. Um, she felt they were very pertinent at the moment. Um, and then um, Patty sent me her message because she didn't get to get time to add her thing, but she was particularly um, encouraged by 2 Chronicles 20, 21 and um, singing praise and warring in our worship and praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So lots of beautiful verses there. Personally, I, I also just agree. I felt that there's been a shift. Um, it's a bit hard to put back my finger on, but I've also seen little changes in just situations um, in people's lives around me in the last couple of weeks. They're not necessarily big or um, dramatic at the moment, but I've, I've definitely felt just a shift in things. Um, so yeah. that was Amen. our group. Amen. Great, great stuff. I think um, uh, going forward, um, we've just got to, we, we don't have uh, time to necessarily hear everybody's, every person in the group there, um, what they, what they revealed. So that, so it's incumbent upon the, the leaders to just give one or two things that you want to highlight. Although Susan, I've got to say that everything that you said was, was beautiful. It was right on. So, um, so thank mm -hmm. you for that. So um, let's go on to room six, room six spokesperson. Okay, that'll be me. And I think I can tie it all together really fast. But we okay. had kind of a pattern going. And so we went from have faith in God, release it to release things to him. The next person was cast your cares on him, which was beautiful. Then talking about the fruit of the spirit, looking at that is really important right now. And from there we went, someone was talking about fasting and fighting in worship. Uh, singing the song Raise a Hallelujah. I thought that was really great. And then from there, we went to uh, somebody who ha is having open visions on a continuing basis and may have something to share with us later on. Maybe not this call, of course, but on another one and waiting for answers as well. And then finally, uh, we need to be uh, in positions of repentance and forgiveness, especially with the hostage situation. We can't forget about forgiving our enemies and things like that. So I think that was good, right? Okay. Wow. Very good, thank you. Repentance and forgiveness, um, so important. Uh, absolutely, part of the the, the humbling walk and uh, not um, not holding on to offense or unforgiveness, which will lead to bitterness. Thank you so much, Gail. All right, let's go on to room seven. Room seven. Okay. Um, I don't think we assigned anyone, so I'll go. Hey. Um. I th the one verse that we shared was 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. And I don't have my Bible in front of me, but that's um, about David and how he, well, how Ziklag had just been ransacked and how he was greatly distressed. And then it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So about strengthening ourselves in the Lord our God um, and about... Well, for me, that's pacing, pacing myself, pacing ourselves, not getting burnt out. And then I think the other thing that we kind of had a convergence on was while we're all praying for Israel and feeling a, um, a feeling a spiritual connection to Israel, I can't remember the exact words, but um not forgetting also Armenia, not forgetting what's going on with China, Ukraine, not forgetting all other places that are in war as well and remembering to pray for those. And so I think they're the main things. And um, someone said that um, just a realisation that we are at war, even though it seems peaceful around us, we are at war. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Justin. I love that verse. 
from uh, Samuel, first Samuel, when um, David says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And that was when every buddy, even his supposed friends were against him and wanting to kill him. I mean, he had nobody standing with him at that point. And it just shows how important it is for us to be able to encourage uh, ourselves in the Lord. So that's a, that's a great, I mean, all the things you said were great, but that that's really important that we do that. All right. Room eight, room eight was our group. And I want to, um, I just want to turn it quickly over to you, Bob, because uh, Bob, you had a, you, you have a testimony to give of what you're actually doing in your county and your local community, which is amazing. So if you can, if you can summarize that in a, a minute or so, uh, please, please do that and unmute yourself. Well, the Lord's late because of National Day of Prayer for U.S., another gal and I kind of teamed up in our county. And so we've chosen to try to create prayer cells in every city that's in our county. And so last Saturday, we were able to bring our county together to pray into the seven mountains. We had approximately 60 people, 15 different pastors. And so our vision is to, to get prayer going within a county of about 65,000 people in 10 different cities, I believe it is. And just start getting people to come and pray for their cities, walk in their cities for prayer, pray for their schools, pray for whatever it takes in your city to make it function at the fullness of Christ and uh, try to bring the body of Christ together to pray with them. We had about 15 different pastors, so it was a blessing to be a part of it. So you and this other gal that you mentioned, neither of you are pastors, right? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You had 60 people. 15 pastors, 10 cities in your county. That's awesome, Bob. That is a, that is really operating as the ecclesia. And this is, you know, this is part of what we're called to do. And guess what? You don't have to be a pastor to organize <laughs> these things. Sometimes it's actually better if you're not, uh, because then the other pastors will get jealous and they'll think it's all about you. So um, I, I, that's just great, Bob. Uh, you know, we just declare God's favor on you and wisdom and uh, as you go forward and that, um, you know, the righteous are as bold as a lion and that's you speaking the truth in love. Thank you, Lord. All right. That's room eight. All right. Room nine spokesperson. That's actually Burka. She's Burka. You're... Yes, it's me to speak. Oh, my actually, English. If, actually, if you're not ready, Burka, Joe, if you want to just jump in and give us yeah. a couple of slides. I, I didn't have anything to take notes on, so Burka, will, she was taking the notes. I, That's okay, all right. You um, know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just give no, us a, no. a couple of That's okay. Yes, I, I think we all have um, noticed a change in atmosphere, definitely, um, and a boldness. And um, I, I, I was even able to – I was – had to do part of a sermon on Sunday. So there was a whole lot of stuff that I was able to share with the whole congregation. So I'm hoping we're going to get more prayer um, generating from that. But um, the others, Berka, can you just remember what you said? Um, I think you your yes. English is good. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. In my, church, um, in my church, there is not uh, so much prayer and uh, it's a little little church, and I was uh, I had the possibility to pray for Israel the the last two weeks after the service. It was great, um, um, and I I have the I have the desire to 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 influence my church uh, or to give this what I have and uh, to that the level of prayer in our church uh, go higher. Um, and I, I, it's my shield. I want to, to in my little force. I want to, um, I want to pray with with my brothers and sisters for Israel to stand and to take position. It's not the time to 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 go to both directions. It's a time to have a stand and to be clear. Wow. And have a voice. Burka, that's great. We just we just declare God's anointing and his favor on you as you do this. And you know, for each of us in our in our area of influence, we just need to say, okay, Lord, 
you know, show me, help me to help me to go forward. And and it's going to have it's going to have a bigger effect than 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 we we even can yep. imagine. Um, thank you. So thank you. Thank you for that. That's great. And we agree, Joe, that there's been a change in the atmosphere, and we're we're very much aware of that. All right, let us go to room ten. Room ten, spokesperson. Okay, that's a reluctant me again. Um, we just shared so much in our room at this pages. Um, so I'll try and be brief. Um, one lady said, look at me. She's been getting that over and over. Not to compromise, no time to be complacent. A time of being stretched um, and that it's an honour. And um, he's refining us in Global Watch, pulling away from the cares and fears into our destiny. So another person had the impression that the whole thing is about God and Lucifer, who we know it's a spiritual war um, against the God of Israel and what he stands for. And she referred out of Exodus where Moses, um, the Lord said to Moses, that my glory goes before you. So we're to ask the Lord, what is your battle? Um, another lady has said that worship's arising. There's a light over the land of Israel. Keep praying and worship expressing holy, 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 hallowed be your name. It's all about him and not us. Um, she, I mean, she works with Muslim students, um, so there's a lot of propaganda, so she tries to um, speak into that and explain the truth. Um, and then she looks for practical ways that she can minister to those um, in Israel and to support Israel. Another lady said she had nothing, but she had a lot. Um, she's from uh -huh. Australia. Um, she talked about the spiritual Anzac anointing that we have as Australians, and um, she hasn't been on the, the um, Global Watch for very long, but she wanted to be on the wall for Israel um, to be ready and be in position. Awesome. And she feels that we're to look beyond what is happening in Israel. There's a broader picture. There's large in, in implications. So we need to um, uh, look at our own nations. Well, I've added that in, but she was focusing on Australia. Uh, as we need to protect Australia, um, Israel, we need to also protect our own nations. Yeah. Then she yeah. gave a compliment to you, Fred, that um, uh, she really, with your four points that you raised, the ab ab abiding and obeying his commands is like breathing. Uh, there's a one that's a loving one another, and she feels that's me. She's been called for that for several years, and um, that the, she's saying the Lord is speaking. Sim well, this was a statement she made that the Lord is speaking similar things in prayer streams wherever people are. Wow! And finally, um, uh, this lady said that we need to be united. We need to have one voice. Islam has one voice. Is united, and they really stand together. Whereas we're quite divided. So we need to become united. Um, the devil's got one voice, but we need to be allowed a voice. I added that bit in. So, and my my thing with me is, um, I did mention in the group that I find everything that's going on at the moment is quite overwhelming. So I've chosen not to uh, not to look at the news, not to look at TV. I'm being very selective about what I watch online. Uh, like people are sending you links all the time. I mean. Wasting a lot of time as well. I mean, it's good to be informed, but I feel like it's just taking you away from what perhaps is more important. And yeah. the other thing I feel is really what I'm going to do in this time is spend more time praying in the spirit. As we know, it's a perfect prayer. And yeah. and um, the Lord knows what he wants on that, on this, the, the, the different situations and time in worship. And then as you've been saying for a while, um, okay. We need to hear okay, that's good. Said. That's good. We don't have to go any further. That was great. That's great. it. I stopped. That's it. That okay. was the end. Sorry. Okay. No, <laughs> that's you. fine. Allison, um, uh, again, I, I just want to emphasize that it is a discipline to keep our eyes focused on heaven and not to, we can need to be aware of the news, but not be uh, totally, you know, absorbed or, or caught up in it. And that, that's a daily discipline. We We all are are facing that that dilemma and that problem so Amen. thank you for bringing bringing that up it's great all right room 11 room 11 spokesperson room 11 um all of us were in agreement about feeling alert and sober 
and listening to the Lord and praying, and then also trying to find other people who are concerned because a lot of people are just going about everyday life and they're not very concerned. So we're just trying to get paired up with other Christians that are concerned so we can pray. Um, Mary had a good scripture, Isaiah 59, 19. It says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will rise up a standard. And so she's been praying on that. Um, Mary talked about, we're just trying to find the balance, remembering to pray not only for Israel, but also for our own countries. And then, of course, praying for salvation um, and unity and focusing on God and his love. I myself sent an email to my grandchildren that are all three at colleges and kind of explaining to them why we need to be praying for Israel and ask, you know, what's been happening on their campuses. So that's wow. it. That's great. That's great, Alyssa. Um, uh, really, really important things. I think trying to find other people who are concerned, it's a great when you find people, it's a great, it's going to be a great way to bring people together in prayer. And that's something that we, we need to be on the alert for. And I think it's awesome that you're contacting your, um, uh, you know, family members who are in, uh, in colleges, because so many colleges are getting, um, are not getting the truth. And they're, yeah. uh, and, and, and in fact, they're being threatened to uh, support when they're when they are uh, speaking up in support of Israel. So, all right, let us go to last but not least, room twelve. Room twelve spokesperson. Last but not least, uh, uh -huh. we felt summing up uh, uh, so much of what you've all shared already. But mm -hmm. we feel in this song, the Lord is speaking to us in Global Watch moving forward. In heavenly armor, we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honour, power and strength. The battle belongs to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honour, power and strength to the Lord. And the last verse, when your enemy presses in hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend. Your deliverance is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. So that sums up uh, what we were discussing. But there's one other thing. Bob uh, Doe spoke to us of the importance moving forward of knowing the bigger picture as watchmen. And he shared with us about the counterfeit false Isaiah, Isaiah 19 highway that has been raised up at the moment. I don't know if you can give him a minute or two to share uh, that, Fred, but I think that is an important thing, things that um, we, um, as watchmen, we're, we're focused, but we're also aware of the bigger picture that is going on. I, I think we need to hear it. Okay, Qu quickly, Bob, if you're, if you can summarize uh, briefly, because we're, we're going over time here. Yeah, I'll try to be real quick. Uh, we were in Iraq uh, one week before this all happened, and we got a prophetic word that was a picture of a ring of fire with two keys hung on the ring, and then a sense that through that, there would be liberty and freedom to the Kurdish people that we were visiting. And we were uh, told to give that word to government leaders so in the final day, we had a meeting and a repentance time over that. And that we realized that the fire was God saying that something serious was about to happen and they needed to be prepared, that it had to do with two keys. And I'll come back to that. And the third thing was that it would bring them the freedom and the liberty that they've been waiting for. So the encouragement in this is that although there's fire brewing, it's changing something in the region to bring a freedom that's been looked for. And then in the keys, we he told us that the Iranians are attempting to build a highway, literally, from Iran through northern Kurdish region into uh, uh, Syria and then through Lebanon to the Mediterranean. And I realized that was one key. And the other key was the Isaiah 19 highway, which is what we've prayed through many times. So we did a declaration 
and repentance, declaring that the false highway would not be allowed to be opened and that the Isaiah highway would be opened. So in regard to Sue, you're saying go through the gate, build up the highway, remove the stones. I believe that's one prayer point we could pray. The false highway would not be established and the true highway of Isaiah 19 would be established. Okay, well, Bob, why don't you pray, uh, uh, just make a prayer or a declaration into that. We'll agree with you. And then we're going to go to you, Sue, for final comments and uh, announcements before we close. Go ahead, Bob. Father, we just thank you that you gave that warning in that region just before this all happened. And that in that moment, we declared and we would declare again, the false highway that Iran is trying to build, the Shiite Crescent Highway through these places in northern Iraq will not stand. It will not take place. And instead, Lord, that your word that declares the Isaiah 19 highway will be formed. That's what we're opening to the Lord. That's what we're declaring, that it be completed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bob. And thank you, Jenny. The battle belongs to the Lord. We're gonna, I'm going to be singing that song this week every time I start to get overwhelmed by the, by the news. So that's great. Um, I think, you know, we, we're, we, we've heard from several uh, different areas that, um, you know, not to neglect praying for our own nations. Absolutely. That's absolutely correct. We are not to neglect praying for our own nations, but we're, we, you know, we can do, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. So we can, we can pray for our own nations and, and pray for Israel. And in fact, uh, so many nations of the world are getting involved in this conflict in one way or another that um, it, it, it totally makes sense from that perspective. So thank you all for your prayers and your, your comments. It's really, it's really rich. Very, very important. All right, Susan, going to you for final comments and uh, announcements. Well, uh, there's, I think we need to say some of the things that we have felt since the beginning of this war. It's one that we want to pour into our national leaders and strengthen them, um, strengthen the resolve of national leaders and call out more national leaders. We still have uh, nations that don't have watches established. That's part of the highway for his return. So um, we will be keeping our ears to the ground as God calls people forth. Let us know if you if there's a, a nation or uh, an arena, a cultural arena that you have a specific burden for, we can help develop watches over that. The daily briefs are going to continue this week from 6 to 6.30. We have 4 to 4.30, excuse me, 4 to 4.30 Jerusalem time in the afternoon. That's 6 to 6.30 here on the Pacific coast, but um, one last caveat. I just want to, it really struck me. I, I'm in the school of the messengers with IHOP. We just spent three days on the, the, uh, um, Bab on Babylon. And one of the major hits was the area of offense. And I hope what I have to say helps encourage you. Why is, was David so great? What was it in his personality that, um, caused him to be centerfold in the in the birth and the history of Israel. Well, Mike Bickle has gone through the life of David and found out how many times he was greatly offended. I mean, this these we get offended once and we could be out for years. He went through 15, 15 experiences of offense and did not pick it up. So if any of you struggles with offense or intimidation from things that people have spoken to you, this is the hour to step through this gate to get over it. Yes, we've forgiven, but we've got to move on, heal up the patch and uh, be strengthened for the times ahead. So we wanna be a place where people can find their footings and find their voice and begin to move forward again. Amen. So good. Thank you, dear. All right. Molly Joshi from Australia, would you please unmute yourself and uh, close us off in prayer? Abba, we so thank you for this time that you gather us as watchmen 
to watch on the walls and to be diligent in what we are saying and hearing by your spirit. Father, we thank you for the encouragement and the revelations that you have brought. And Father, so uh, so awesome to hear your great exploits that you are doing, Lord, and you are birthing and bringing forward for such a time as this. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that is resting upon all your watchmen. For Lord, we particularly lift up Dr. Fred and Sue and the whole leadership team and each one assigned on their portion of the war and especially in Israel. Father, we thank you that you are unraveling all your plans that are to come forth in this hour and this time and this season and that you are preparing our hearts and giving us wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your son for everything is in Christ, through Christ and for Christ and before the coming of the Lord, preparing the way of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the blessing. We thank you, Father, for the unity. We ask for the strength that you give each one of us in this hour, Father. So we bless you from the nations of the earth and we align with the King of glory and we declare Jehovah Shavuot, you are Lord over Israel. You are Lord over the nations of the earth. And we thank you for your goodness and mercy that follows each one of us. Strengthen and revive each one, Father, and our families. And we declare a blessing over Israel and over the families of the earth. For you are God, the Father of all families. And we bless you, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Everybody Amen. unmute Amen. yourselves. Amen. Take Amen. each other. Amen. 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 Amen.